What are Christians supposed to do if they find themselves in jail? Let's take a look. Hey everybody, welcome to the Video Worship Guide. Uh, this week we're going to take a break from Luke and we're going to head over to Philippians. So uh, turn with me to Philippians chapter 1. We're going to be in verses 12 through 18. Um, Paul is the writer of this little letter. And he's writing to this church in Philippi to give them encouragement, to, to let them know that he received their gift, and to, uh, to give a little bit of uh, teaching as well. But in the beginning of this letter, uh, Paul takes a moment to encourage the Philippians in his imprisonment. At this point, Paul is literally in chains. Uh, he is chained to a Roman guard under house arrest because he was preaching the gospel. You might say that the Romans had arrested Paul's attention. <laughs> so, <clears throat> let's read this passage and see what we're supposed to do if we find ourselves in prison. I want to. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some, indeed, preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. And the former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. So we as Christians are called to share Christ. Uh, when Jesus was... Uh, in his earthly ministry uh, with his disciples, he gave them a commission. Uh, we sometimes will call that the Great Commission today. Uh, he told, tells them to go and make disciples of all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. Uh, and he also tells them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So this Paul, this missionary, this man of God has gone out and he is preaching the good news, he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he gets arrested for it. He is taking God's word to heart, he's obeying it to the point of suffering, and he is arrested and chained. Yet, while most of us might be sorrowful or freak out a little bit, Paul sees this as a joyful thing. He sees this uh, as an opportunity to share Christ. I mean, the guy he's sitting next to is literally chained to him. He's got a captive audience. He's not going anywhere. He gets to share Christ with this, this soldier, but not just this soldier, as we see in the, uh, the passage here, that it's become known throughout the whole Imperial Guard that he is there for Christ. So Paul doesn't see himself going to prison for sharing the gospel as a bad thing. He, he says no matter where he's at, he's going to share the gospel, and, and the gospel will continue to go forth and, uh, and make, make a difference, will, will not return void. So he sees this as an opportunity to share Christ himself, but he also sees that other Christians are becoming more bold in sharing and not being afraid to share by his example. <laughs> Other Christians are becoming more bold to share the gospel because Paul is in prison. But then he shares something interesting that uh, there are others who are more bold to preach, but some of them are preaching uh, out of goodwill and doing doing it the right way, but others are preaching selfishly out of envy and rivalry. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they think that somehow they're going to get some of Paul's followers or 
they just didn't like Paul because of his past or something like that. I, I'm not sure, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, they're preaching Christ. They're preaching the truth, but they're preaching with the wrong motivation. But I, I love Paul's reaction. He, he doesn't get uh, all upset and go, well, how dare they talk about me that way or, or treat me that way or how dare they do that. He says basically this. He says, I don't care what people say about me. It's not about me. As long as Christ is being proclaimed in that, I rejoice. So for Paul, over in uh, a few verses later in verse 21, he says that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you truly see that lived out in his life. So for us, the encouragement then is not that we should seek to go to jail, although uh, uh, maybe at some point that will be the case, but we know that around the world some of our brothers and sisters are literally going to jail for preaching the gospel. So we should be encouraged that here in the United States and, and other places where we have freedom to speak, that we should be more bold to speak and share the gospel and make disciples without fear. So uh, we need to ask ourselves then today, uh, do we really enjoy seeing people come to faith and to see Christ proclaimed? And then who do we need to share the gospel with today? Who do you know, a neighbor, co-worker, friend, family member, who do you know that you need to share the gospel with, who needs to hear the good news? The memory verse for this week is Philippians 1.21, as I just mentioned. Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That should be our motto as we live day in and day out. Let me pray for us. Father God, we thank you that you are sovereign. We thank you that you are a God who loves, a God who saves, and you have chosen to use us, your sinful children. God, to share your good news, the same good news that has saved us. God, you want us to proclaim to the world, to use any situation we might find ourselves in, even if we find ourselves in prison at some point for sharing, your, sharing our faith. God, that we should use all of those opportunities to share the gospel, to, to see people saved. Father, put people in our way today, this week, that we can share the gospel with. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and uh, we'll see you next week. God bless. Hey!